The Bulgarian-Turkish border currently uh, is the second busiest land border in the world after U.S.-Mexico. Um, the amount of cargo that goes through the border is uh, absolutely insane. Uh, that border crossing, one of the border crossings, sees 4,000 trucks per day. In addition to train traffic, in addition to cars, buses, vans, and everything else. I'm just talking about the, the trucks. Uh, and uh, that has been increasing 20 to 30 percent year over year, especially now with the war in Ukraine, all the traffic from uh, um, Middle Asia basically is coming uh, coming down through the Southern Corridor. Um, in addition to that, uh, we see that the Bosphorus is continually congested. Uh, and uh, part of the reason for that is that the amount of traffic that goes into the Black Sea is uh, substantially increased. And also the blockage of the corridor through Ukraine for Azerbaijan, Armenia, uh, Georgia, all of that's now blocked. That used to go because of the Soviet Union, it used to go up north and then uh, and then west. Uh, and then the traffic between Bulgaria and Greece has been increasing dramatically as well. Basically, Western Bulgaria uses Thessaloniki as its port, uh, rather than Burgas and Varna, which are in Bulgaria. Uh, and I have to say, they use Thessaloniki despite the lack of infrastructure, uh, because the rail line goes down to 40 kilometers an hour at some points on the Greek part. Uh, our part is electrified, single, but average speed about 70, 80 kilometers an hour, so it's not nearly as good as it should be. Uh, where we are connecting with Alexandropolis uh, in, and also in, with Turkey in, in Svilengrad on our side, it's double electrified 160 kilometers an hour. Uh, and we have that built out uh, quite a bit. Um, we are completing that up north, connecting to Romania, and we are building a complete new highway from Ruse uh, up north all the way down to uh, Makaza and connecting to Vignatia uh, in Greece, so we can catch both Kavala and Alexandrupoli uh, and Thessaloniki, quite frankly, uh, with that highway. Um, that's already in the works. On the highway side, we start construction on the first uh, 70 kilometers. It's 350 total. The other 70 is on the bid procedures and the rest uh, we're doing the design for. On the rail, um, as I said, it's upgrades on two of the lots and one of the lot needs to be built. Uh, the total project on the Bulgarian side is going to be about 6 billion euros and we've already started planning that in our budgets. On the Greek side, um, I talked to uh, the Greek finance minister and, and, and the government. Uh, the road is only 20 kilometers on the Greek side, the highway, so that's not a problem. The railway update is going to be about 600 million euros and they're applying to the CEF2 facility, which an application which we're supporting. So we hope uh, that will also be kicked off uh, this year. So uh, from purely kind of numbers perspective, uh, we're in the process of finalizing a government to government, international government agreement with the Greek government, um, where all of that is put in place. And we're also talking to the Romanians on how we continue that infrastructure up north. Uh, in terms of traffic, uh, the traffic is there. Uh, the existing traffic alone is more than enough to uh, uh, fill up the ports with the expansions. And we see massive increase in traffic that goes uh, goes through through the Balkans. What we've seen also with the traffic used to go uh, in the old Via Militaris, Istanbul Vienna road, Bulgaria, Serbia, uh, Hungary, uh, all the way up to Vienna, uh, and that's how the major highways were built back in the day, from all the way back from Roman times. Um, and but what we see right now is that on the Bulgarian-Serbian border, which is along this route. Uh, the traffic is much smaller than the secondary border crossing with Turkey, not the primary. Uh, so uh, more than 80% of the traffic that comes from South Greece or Turkey goes through Romania now, as opposed to going to Serbia. Uh, and the reason is people don't want to leave the EU and re-enter the EU. Uh, even though the infrastructure is better uh, through the Serbia, Hungary, uh, Austria route, uh, most of the traffic gets routed through uh, through Romania, so that's also uh, a point to expand there. And we had the three prime ministers meet in Varna uh, last fall uh, with the joint declaration, and the Romanians are also going to be building out their piece of uh, the infrastructure. Um, so it's happening, it's exciting. Uh, that's on the transport corridor side. On the energy side, we doubled our electricity interconnect, and we are further increasing that. We have the gas interconnect right now at 5 BCM with Greece. 
and about 20 BCM with Turkey. Uh, we're about to double the connectivity with Greece to about 10 BCM. Um, and to give you an idea what that means, um, between the Greek and Turkish feed points, and we repurposed the old Russian pipeline that used to go from the Soviet Union down to Greece and Turkey, the trans -Balkan, now we're using it back south to north. Uh, and our system is on a ring, which means that we can move from any point to any point on the system. Uh, so the national gas system. So Bulgaria basically right now transships about as much gas from southern direction into Europe, um, almost as much as Nord Stream. And um, at the end of this year, my understanding is that the agreement between Russia and Ukraine for transit expires, which means that the main pipeline that goes Russia, Ukraine, Slovakia, uh, Hungary, and then, uh, and then Vienna would also stop being used. Uh, which basically means that this is going to be the main route that's not fully blocked to get uh, to get gas into Europe. Um, so pretty exciting stuff. Um, and we can talk a lot more about how the business is organizing all of that and using all of that. But I think for the first time, we are starting to see kind of real strategic cooperation on those issues. And there is not only willingness, but pretty fast actions as far as governments are concerned. Uh, 